Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about playing defense, and that is about understanding network protocols. So we'll be using a tool called Wireshark, and directly from Wireshark, you can install it onto a Windows 10 machine or into a Linux machine. And from there on, you can see the different kind of protocols that are being transacted, and also understand about how it works back and maps back into the OSI layer or OSI model. So there is a open systems interconnection model. So that will tell you about how packets transfer from the layer one, the physical wires, all the way to the application data, and how you can see different kind of transmission protocols, like transmission control protocol, user datagram protocol, and so on. So by having an understanding in Wireshark, especially in terms of basic 101, you can then interpret and analyze what kind of traffic is going around in the environment and what is permitted and what is abnormal. And as a cybersecurity professional, you'll be able to understand what are the potential malicious activities happening on the network because everything requires transmission within a network in order to move around the different kind of machine to machine point of contact. So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So on the foreground of Windows 10 running, and I can go ahead and launch Wireshark directly from the start manual. So once you click Wireshark, it's loading the information in the modules and looking for the local interfaces. So in my case, I have a wireless network interface card named Wi-Fi Point Apple. So it depends on what kind of network interface card you want to look out for. You want to sniff, look at the packets that are being transacted. So you can double click on your network interface card. So I'm going to pause here for a moment and to really think about some of the settings. So on the top left, you can go into the capture under the options. So before we even start capturing traffic on your network interface card, you want to think about whether you want to set forward promiscuous mode. So in promiscuous mode, here we have the item or the network interface card that we have selected and we set it as non-promiscuous mode. So if you set this as promiscuous mode, it would actually sniff out all of the packets within an enterprise network. So if I tick on it and I click start and I select continue without saving, we will see a lot more packets in the enterprise network because we're capturing all of those information within the enterprise, so within the intranet network. So here we can see all sorts of traffic, even if it is not from our source or even if it is not from our destination. So we can see other IP addresses transacting in the environment, even not targeting this particular host or this source destination address. So for today's tutorial, we will stop and we will not use the promiscuous mode and we're going to click start so this will continue without saving so all we are seeing now is just traffic in and out of this particular machine and this machine is running on the IP address of 192.168.1.1 so on your home network on your home setup it could be a very different IP address so what we can see here we can see a bunch of different kind of traffic coming in and out towards this target machine and one very popular one you see is address resolution protocol so over here we can see that there are different layers that are being sent over into the current computer. So we can see that we are moving from frame, from Ethernet, from ARP, address resolution protocol. So what does it mean? So again, what it's trying to say here is because ARP is used to translate between IP addresses and MAC addresses. So you can actually see the return results. So we can recognize that we have the IP address of 192.168.1.254 and it has a MAC address of as such. So we can see all this content within here. So when you double click on any of the packets, you'll be able to see much more details, much more information, the frame, the data, and so on. You can expand them into specific areas to look out for more information. So I'm gonna pause here, and we're gonna look at some other important traffic that will be used as part of today's tutorial. So the first thing that's really important is we have a separate operating system Again, it could be coming from anywhere. So when I start capturing packets and I continue without saving and I go into another computer and this computer is going to do a ping, a ping into the target machine, which is 192.168.1.1. So we're going to hit that and it's going to send a few information over, a few packets over. And we see that we have sent four packets of ICMP over into the machine that's running Wireshark. 
So going back here, we're going to pause it and we're going to scroll down to see whether we are able to look out for ICMP traffic. So here we see ICMP traffic coming from 192.168.1.23. So we identify, we manage to identify the source IP address. And from here directly, we can see that there is a request and there is a reply from us from 192.168.1.1 all the way back to .23. So of course, directly we can see on the ICMP protocol and we can see the data here. So we see a data being sent back over and we can double click on it to expand the information or the data in question. And we can look out for the ICMP request and of course, as response. And of course, some important things that we can also look at is in terms of the TCP handshake. So for example, if I go over here and I start up a Apache server and when I launch it I click start and I hit enter so this will start up the HTTP server on the IP address of 192.168.1.23 so going back into the Wireshark we can do a start capturing packet again and we can go into a Chrome browser for example and I can launch 192.168.1.23 followed by port 8001 because we have set the configuration as 8001 on the Colonix server. So now once we have done that, we can actually go back into Wireshark to see what kind of traffic is being transacted when we launch a browser. So when we scroll down, we can actually see that there's a lot of information. We have all kinds of traffic moving in and out of this host machine. So of course, there's a few ways for you to speed up the process of identifying what kind of information is being filtered and being shown so this is where we go into the apply a display filter so this is a really key component in terms of understanding the filters so a couple of things that we can do is we can think about IP source so we can put IP dot SRC and we can put double equal sign 192.168.1.1 so this would specify where is the source IP address coming from? And when we hit enter, we can see all of the source IP address going to different kind of destination. So there's a number of services running within this machine that are out of box, out of services that are run automatically when you start the program. And of course, if you want to specify IP source instead, we put to IP dot destination. So when we put IP dot DST equal equal 192.168.1.23 and we hit enter and directly from here we can see the more information so we can see that there is a get of our HTTP 1.1 and when we scroll down into the middle we can see there is a hypertext transfer protocol so again we can see that there's a request there's a Chrome that is being sent over and more information that are being transacted in between the different client and the browser and the server so directly from here, we can see the kind of information we are getting back from the server. And of course, importantly, going back when we start the capturing again, and if I was to go to a different site, say google.com, and when I hit google.com, because it is using an encrypted traffic, so once I go back into Wireshark, because it is already capturing, and when I pause it, and when I go back into the destination, of the IP address of google.com we would see that we will encounter a lot of information that are being encrypted so we would have no idea what information is being transacted and being sent over into Google so here we are going to a site like yahoo.com and when you hit enter it's going to download all the information from yahoo.com and of course we can do further filter filtering so we can see that there's client hello coming in from 106.10.218.155 and we can scroll down a little and we can see that there is more information so from the top we can see that there's standard query to jodoyahoo.com and there's some transaction on the UDP as well as domain name system so domain name system is actually a way for us to get the IP address back into human readable domain name so here we can see that we have a client hello and we can see different kind of application data being transacted between 192.168.1.1 and when we go into command prompt we can actually do a ping on yahoo.com and see whether we are able to get the exact same IP address that we see on Wireshark. 
So once we hit enter, we can see that there is an IP address of 106.10.50.11. So again, this could be a different server running in the system. So when we scroll down, we can put the IP dot destination equal equal and we'll copy the Yahoo IP address that we receive 106.10 so equal 106.10.250.11 so once you hit enter we can see that we are sending some information over into the yahoo.com so we can see some application data being transacted and is using the transport layer security version 1.2 so whatever you see here on the data are actually encrypted so we will have a challenge trying to understand what kind of information is within the application because of transport layer security within http2 and some really interesting ways we can look at is in terms of statistics which is part of Wireshark so we can look at packet lengths, endpoints. So for example, if I click on endpoints, we can see that on Ethernet 7, we can see the different kind of packets that are being sent to different IP addresses of the MAC address and the number of bytes that is being captured. And on IPv4, we can see all the IP addresses that is being transacted with and how about IPv6 too. So we can see the TCP and as well as UDP packets that are being sent back and forth towards the different IP addresses. Additionally, in terms of uh, statistics, we can look at the I.O. graph. So we have the input-output graph. And over here, we can look at the different points, and we can see the number of packets that are being transacted. And this actually gives you an idea about the number of packets that will be sending in and out of this particular network interface card. And we can also look at packet lengths. So packet lengths will tell you how big or how huge are the packets in terms of the lengths what is the number of counts on average so again all these are statistics are important especially if you're running web servers application servers you want to make sure that you have your servers running optimally and there is no massive spike of traffic and that you are catering enough computation resources to actually look out for those potential information and other more interesting ways you can use is to actually increase the number of filtering that you want into the system so we can also put in terms of the protocol or in terms of the proxy or in terms of the other information so you can have destination and you can have source so ip dot source equal equal 192.168.1.1 so once you hit enter on that it will filter even further down to make sure that the source and destination are exactly where you're looking for so that you can look and analyze specifically for what other information you want to assess. So another important point is also the ability to follow the stream. So here, for example, if I click onto the TLS 147 application data, I can right click on it and I can click on TCP stream. So over here, I can see the TCP stream and we can see that there is sg.yahoo.com. We can see the digit cert and we can scroll down and we can see all the information regarding the transaction or the application data that is being sent back and forth between the client server as well as the browser. So again, this is really an important area also for you to do in terms of investigation, in terms of looking at potential information within the environment. So we have learned about Wireshark 101, how you can interpret data, how you can use filtering or display filter to look out for any kind of potential anonymous activities and be able to investigate and analyze them and once you do that this would actually help you better understand about the kind of network protocols network traffic that are being used in the environment and how you can manage those information within a large enterprise imagine you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of endpoint servers how do you manage them not just on the endpoint level but what about on your access point level what about in a server level and you can then define the kind of security policies you want into your firewall, into your intrusion prevention systems, your detection systems, and be able to correlate all of them together and have a holistic cybersecurity framework to protect yourself as well as your key data. So I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. So remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel 
so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.